أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم المنافقون والمنافقات بعضهم من بعض يأمرون بالمنكر وينهون عن المعروف ويقبضون أيديهم نسوا الله فنسيهم إن المنافقين هم الفاسقون وعد الله المنافقين والمنافقات والكفار نار جهنم خالدين فيها هي حسمهم ولعنهم الله ولهم عذاب مقيم كالذين من قبلكم كانوا أشد منكم قوة وأكثر أموالا وأولادا فاستمتعوا فاستمتعوا بخلاقهم فاستمتعتم بخلاق بخلاقكم كما استمتع الذين من قبلكم بخلاقهم الذين من قبلكم بخلاقهم وخذتم كالذي خاضوا أولئك حبطت أعمالهم في الدنيا والآخرة وأولئك هم الخاسرون ألم يأتهم نبأ الذين من قبلهم قوم نوح وعاد وثمود وقوم إبراهيم وأصحاب مدين وأصحاب مدين والمؤتفقات أتتهم رسلهم بالبينات فما كان الله ليظلمهم ولكن كانوا أنفسهم يظلمون والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرهمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم وعد الله المؤمنين والمؤمنات وعد الله المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها ومساكن طيبة في, الجن في جنات عد ورضوان من الله أكبر ذلك هو الفوز العظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم سلام محمد وآل محمد صلوات آج رخصات ہو رہی ہے تم سے زہر آیا آج رخصات ہو رہی ہے تم سے زہر آیا لی ہر پردے شب میں میری میت اٹھانا 
یالی آج روخ ست ہو رہی ہے تم سے ظاہر یالی ہر پردہ شب میں میری میت اٹھانا یالی آج روخ ساتھ ہو رہی ہے تم سے ظاہر آیالی پسلیاں توری گئی کیسے یہ بتلاؤں گی میں حشر کے میدان میں بھی اس حال میں آؤں گی میں ارے ہاتھ پہلو سے نہ تم میرا ہٹانا یا علی مصیبت آپ نے اچھا ہوا دیکھی نہیں اب میں سیدھ ہاتھ سے تس بھی ہی پہ سکتی نہیں ارے ایسا کن فض نے مارا تازیانہ یا علی آج روخ ساتھ ہو رہی ہے تم سے ظاہر آیا علی اور کہتی ہے زینب یہ مجھ سے دیکھ کے چہرہ میرا کہتی ہے زینب یہ مجھ سے دیکھ کے چہرہ میرا آپ کے رخصار پہ یہ نیل ہے کیسا پڑا میں نے کھایا ہے تماچا ارے میں نے کھایا ہے تماچا مت بتانا یا علی آج روخ ساتھ ہو رہی ہے تم سے ظاہر آیا اور تازیانے کی عذیت کا اتانا ہے طرف تازیانے کی عذیت کا اٹھانا ایک طرف وہ تماج قتل محسن در جلانا ایک طرف لیکن یہ سنو سب سے مشکل تھا مگر سب سے مشکل تھا مگر دربار جانا یا علی جب میری تلکین پر نہ یاد کر لینا ذرا در کے گرنے سے میرا بازو بھی ہے ٹوٹا ہوا میرے شانوں کو ذرا دھیرے ہلانا یا علی آج روخ ساتھ ہو رہی ہے تم سے ظاہر آیا دی ہر پردائے شب میں میری میت اٹھانا یا علی پھر محمد و آل محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tonight's Fatimiya uh, program is displayed on the screen uh, for today until September 27th. On, September, uh, on December 26th is the Shahadat night of uh, Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala. The program will begin at 5 p.m. with Salat, Quran, Marshia, Majlis, uh, followed by full niyaz. On the 27th of December is the Shahada day of Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. Program will begin at 7.15 p.m. with Salat, Quran, Marshia, Majlis, Noha, and Ziyarat. For boys and girls uh, aged five to eight years old, uh, there is a parallel program for tonight and tomorrow at 5 p.m. in the lower level of JCC near Mark Library. More details are displayed on the screen. Tonight, after the main program, uh, we'll be having uh, an after-hours discussion uh, session with Sheikh Nur Muhammad uh, for brothers and sisters aged 13 to 28 on the topic of being unapologetic Muslims in the West. More details are displayed. The ladies' program for the Shahadat of Bibi Fatima alayhi salam will be on Tuesday, 27th of December at 10 a.m. The program uh, will uh, begin with Quran, Hadith e Kisa, Mershia, lecture by Zakira Tahira Qasim Ali in Gujarati and English, uh, Matam, Ziyarat, and Dwar Faraj. The Ladies Committee presents Ladies Game Night and a conversation with Sister Tahira Qasim Ali. All are welcome to join, youths, seniors, ladies, mothers, and children, on Friday, December 30th uh, at 7 p.m. at JCC. Regist res registration link is gonna come soon. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Surah Fatiha is requested for Marhuma Leila Bai Datu, who passed away yesterday, December 23rd, in Toronto. Salatul Mayat will be at Jaffrey Community Center tomorrow, Sunday, December 25th, at 1 p.m. after Zohrain prayers. Thereafter, we'll proceed for the burial at Al Hussein Foundation Cemetery. Al Fatiha. Tonight is Salih Sawab Majlis and is in benefit of Marhum Wali Muhammad Amarshi, Marhum Amarshi Jiwa, Marhum Nagji Dirji, and all the Marhum, uh, uh, and Surah Fatiha is also requested for all of the Marhums listed on the screen. Al Fatiha, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah. Dua Shifar Mariz is requested for all of the names listed on the screen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amma yujibu al-mustarra iza da'ahu wa yakshifu su. Amma yujibu al-mustarra iza da'ahu wa yakshifu su. Amma yujibu al-mustarra iza da'ahu wa yakshifu su. أما يجيب المستر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المستر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء ارحمني برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين We will now have mercy by Hadi and Mahdi صلوات اللهم صل
پر محمد و آل محمد شلوات وقت نزدیک تھا کھری رات تھی زخمی زہرا نے فضا کو آواز دی آئے فضا تو زہرا نے رو کر کہا اب تمہارے حوالے ہے یہ گر میرا تم کو معلوم ہے میرا حال بہن میرے بچوں کا رکھنا خیال بہن میرے بچوں کا رکھنا خیال بہن یہ فضا پکاری بتائیں یہ بی بی کمی کیسے ماں کی میں پوری کروں گی ماں ہوتی ہے ماں ہوتی ہے میں بھولی نہیں آپ کا گھر چلانا او ایک وقت میں دو فریضے نبانا وہ چاکی چلانا وہ جھولا جھولانا کبھی آپ کے بن نہ گزرا کوئی دن مجھے اما فضا وہ کہتے ہیں لیکن ماں ہوتی ہے ماں ہوتی ہے وہ گودی میں لے کر اسے پیار کرنا وہ کہنا میرے لال سو جا حسینا وہ آواز سن ہی بیٹے کا سونا میں جب اس کو لوری سناؤں گی بی بی کہاں سے وہ آواز لاؤں گی بی بی ماں ہوتی ہے ماں ہوتی ہے ہو پیاسا تو پانی پلا دوں گی بی بی میں کھانا بھی اس کو کھلا دوں گی بی بی سویرے میں چہرہ دلا دوں گی بی بی گلے سے لگاؤں وہ روتے مناؤں مگر ماں کی خوشبو کہاں سے ملاؤں ماں ہوتی ہے ماں ہوتی ہے سوال Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. As I'm sure that you've noticed, today's program is slightly different than the usual. Today's youth-led program uh, is a Jaffi Islamic Youth Initiative in collaboration with Hussein's Ark of Salvation. Our aim is to have a more engaging Fatimiyah program by having a podcast-style conversation. Uh, we hope that by this uh, informal discussion between Sheikh Nuru and our host, Adnan Rashid, the youth and the community at large would be able to better learn from the life of Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. 
Some of, you, uh, some of you might be wondering what Hussein's Arc is. We are an organization whose aim is to be at the forefront of Shia digital innovation, while also engaging the community through unique events and initiatives. Hussein's Arc collaborates with different organizations throughout the entire world in order to better engage the Shia community and grow closer to Allah through, the love of, uh, through our love for the Ahlul Bayt. To stay up to date with our latest events and collaborations, be sure to follow us at Hussein's Ark and Jaffrey Youth on Instagram. On behalf of the Jaffrey Islamic Youth and Hussein's Ark of Salvation, we would like to thank Sheikh Nur Muhammad uh, for taking the time to bless us with his knowledge. We would uh, like to also take a moment to thank the Mukis team for all of their support, Adnan Rashid for being today's host, and most importantly, all of you for attending today's event. We would now like to welcome our guest speaker, Sheikh Nur Muhammad and brother Adnan Rashid to the stage with three loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala If we can start with Surah Al-Fatiha. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tonight we have an interesting conversation between um, a beautiful individual, someone whose nur you can see from his face, a very kind hearted individual, and someone who has blessed a lot of us and has also been someone who I've been able to learn for growing up. And I could say that perhaps I wouldn't be where I am today without the blessed and the beautiful Sheikh Nuru. He's definitely been someone who has been constantly coming to our community and I know he's helped many people within this community as well. And with that, let's recite a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And before we begin, I want us to all recite Dua Al-Faraj in order to hasten the reappearance, ask Allah to protect the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib Al-Amri. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Imam Sahib Al-Amri was Zaman. And our existence is solely to be a soldier for the Imam of our time, such that we'll be able to fight with him one day to commemorate or to bring vengeance upon the death of Abba Abdullah. Please recite Dua Al-Faraj together. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma kulli waliyika al-hujjatan ibn al-Hasan. Salawatika alayhi wa ala abai Fi hadhi saa Wa fi kulli saa Waliyan wa hafidha Wa qaidan wa nasra Wa dalilan wa ayna Hatta tuskinahu ardaka tawa وَتُمَتِّيَهُ فِيهَا تَوِيلًا بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاهِمِينَ اللَّهُمَّ صَلِّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدْ Before the conversation begins, I know I'm taking a lot of our time. But I just want to actually ask the crowd a question. With the raise of your hands, how many of you within this crowd know what misogyny means? I probably can count the fingers in my hands, or count the numbers with my fingers. To give a definition, misogyny is where there is hatred or disrespect towards women or women in general. 
And as a topic tonight, this kind of is quite interesting, especially when it comes to Fatimiyah. Many of us commemorate Sayyidatina Nisa al Alameen. Many of us have perhaps seen examples within our community. And as a youth, we felt that perhaps it's important to have this conversation started today. So I'm here with Sheikh Nuru, who's had quite the experience within his own community uh, regarding the topic of being abusive towards women, being disrespectful. I want to ask, perhaps let's start maybe in the ancient times. Uh, when I say ancient, perhaps during the time of Rasulullah or maybe Jahiliyyah as well. What scenarios or what examples could we perhaps maybe see within that time? And perhaps what did the infallible do? Or is there something within the Quran where there was an instance of misogyny or disrespect or hatred towards women where the Prophet ﷺ came to fix? Or perhaps Amir al Mu'mineen? Auz billahi sami'il alim min al shaytan al la'in al rajim. Bismillahir rahman al rahim. الحمد لله والثناء لله ثم الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى أهله أهل الله. First of all, brothers and sisters, is to really thank Almighty Allah for gracing us with this wonderful opportunity to have this very important interactive session on misogyny. From the onset, I must say. It is an irony that two men are discussing this topic. It would have been an ideal situation where you have women being part of this discussion. But of course, due to situation, we thought we'll try our level best to look at this topic with the aim of stimulating discussions, with the aim of encouraging one another to go out there and play our parts when it comes to the importance of women's rights within the religion of Islam. So before I answer the question of our dear brother Adnan, what is really misogyny? Because that is what we are having discussion about. And as you heard from him, we'll try as much as we can to link it with the current situation of Fatimiya so that we go out there thinking of what to do from the lessons we take from the life of this great lady. You see, brothers and sisters, misogyny is not only hatred of women. It can also include aspects of prejudice, fear, and grandiosity. And it doesn't always involve men. Misogyny, my dear brothers and sisters, can take different shapes and different forms. For example, it can be very blatant, like what you mentioned, violence against women. And sometimes it can be less obvious in a very subtle way. For example, you realize sometimes there are people who subtly perpetuating inequality between men and women. And from time to time, really, we see some people, quote unquote, who are misogynistic in belief, may always take worse at men while diminishing and trivializing women with the same opinion. And so Islam, being a holistic way of life, as we all know, in the sense that it provides us with general guiding principles for each and every aspect of our lives. Islam discusses this, Absolutely. either in the Holy Quran or through the traditions 
of our beloved Prophet and Ahlul Bayt. I mean, we all know very well, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala sent our beloved Prophet to the world to remove ignorance. You know, the first Muslims who were fresh from the pre-Islamic period, they still had these baggages yeah. of those sentiments of pre-Islamic period. One of them is violence against women. Absolutely. One of them is hatred against women. So if you look at Islamic history, there were times when women were buried. Yeah. There were times when women were not involved in any community affairs. Mm -hmm. Prophets came with a direction to root out those things. But of course, there were people who would still do that. Even during the time of Umayyad, you realize that women's voice were not given prominence. And Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam tried this level verse, as we'll discuss later, to root out that, to ensure that women were given voices. Typical example, Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Why did he take Sayyid Zainab out, Sayyid Zainab out to Karbala? It was a strong statement yeah. to say that we cannot do without women's voice. Yeah, absolutely. I think with uh, Sayyid Zainab, salam alayha, she played a huge role within Karbala. Um, and perhaps without her and Imam Sajjad, our lamentations towards Abu Abdullah wouldn't actually be happening. And it's very interesting you do mention the tragedy of uh, Karbala. Because I think within that root, when I say the tragedy of Ashura, it doesn't just end on the 10th of Muharram, does it? It continues. And it's quite interesting because the women play a huge role thereafter. And how the Umayyads attack against the women started to take place after the death of Abba Abdullah. Which I find quite interesting within the Musibah of Imam Hussein, that even while he's on the ground and the enemies wanted to see if he was truly killed or not, they said, go and attack the women. And Abba Abdullah tried his level best to stand up. He made a threat towards the enemies and says, who are you to go attack my women? Quite interesting in terms of the parallel where you have a, an individual who's the imam of our time or the imam of their time looking to protect his people. While on the other hand, you have a group of individual, group of animals you can say. I don't know if you can even call them human beings at that point. That you can say that we're there just to go harm. Harm many of the the sisters of Abba Abdullah, the women of Abba Abdullah, and his children. So with that being said, you mentioned Rasulullah came and Islam is a way of life. Now, Jahiliya came, and it's called Jahiliya, obviously there's continuations of Jahiliya or different aspects. Rasulullah came to solve Jahiliya. The Quran came as a, to show us a way of life to learn from. Are there any examples which happened within Jahiliya? You mentioned, I believe, one of them, that perhaps we can see what difference or magnitude Rasulullah had a play upon the men of Jahiliya or upon the people of Jahiliya, not just the men, but upon the people of Jahiliya. You see, when you, ex when you examine the role of our beloved prophets, you realize that within two decades, he managed to transform uncivilized society. Yeah. Hence, people were willing to stand alongside our beloved prophets. Absolutely. Women, as I mentioned, were buried, or girls, mm -hmm. at a very young age. Number one, because of financial issue. That when you have a boy, he will grow, becomes a man, and then he will take care of the family. Yeah. In fact, some girls, if you look at it, you read history properly, were buried only because 
their mothers went through difficulties when they were carrying them when they were pregnant. Yeah. So if you look at some verses of the Holy Quran, for example, you look at Quran 6, verse 151. You look at Quran 6, verse 137. Yeah? And you look at Quran 17, verse 31. Quran shed light on this. And the solutions brought by our beloved Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa ali, that this mentality is not acceptable. This mentality is uncivilized mentality. This mentality is inhumane. This mentality of showing hatred and violence towards women is barbaric, is satanic. And our beloved prophet stood completely against it. And that is why he was proud of saying that if it wasn't of the wealth of Khadija and the sword of Ali, this Islam wouldn't have grown the way it has grown. So what I'm trying to say is that, yes, Islam, right from the beginning, was affected by this kind of people. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, ensured that he fought it with whatever he had given to him by Almighty Allah, azzawajal. Absolutely. It's amazing because for anyone who's interested in history, if you read about the life and the society during um, pre-Islam, so when I say pre-Islam, pre-revelation, if you see the life of how the mushrikeen and the kuffar within Mecca were versus how Islam was brought in, anyone would see it as being something that's night and day. You have individuals bearing women or bearing their daughters. You have this form of abuse or aggression towards each other. The Arabian society was something where it wasn't an eye for an eye. It was actually even worse than that. You know, say you kill my brother Ali and now I'm going to kill two of your family members and then you come and take three and it just keeps growing, growing, growing and this anger and hatred would just continue. There was no civil way of actually handling disputes within Arabia. And coming to see what the Prophet ﷺ did, as you mentioned, changes everything. And I think what something I unfortunately haven't done, and I, I wish when I was younger I took more time to pay attention to the Prophet, is that he made a huge impact. There's a reason why he's the most beloved. His name is, is the most popular name in the world. But going back to this, another thing you've mentioned, these aspects of Jahiliyyah still remained within Islam. Now you have the Prophet ﷺ come and eliminate it. But you still have those lingering individuals who still had aspects of Jahiliyyah within them. That being said, it reminds me of an incident after the Prophet's death. Perhaps you would be best to shed light onto that. Yeah. You see, brothers and sisters, and those watching us online, Islam is a very beautiful religion. And I always tell people, try as much as you can to differentiate between Islam and some of those who practice Islam. There are people out there who would look at those who practice Islam, not necessarily in line with what the Holy Prophet brought to us, and they will say that is what Islam is all about. Now, before I go to your question, you see, a lady once went to our beloved Prophet. She had a question. So she said to the Holy Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa that, I feel Islam is male, Dominated. There's nothing for us women. But then the Holy Prophet looked at her. And of course, a verse was revealed, isn't it? But no. There's a verse where Allah says, In the Muslimina, wal Muslimat. Wal Mu'minina, wal Mu'minat. Up to the end of the ayah. A'adda Allahu lahum magfiratan wa ajiran azima. 
Indeed, Muslim man, Muslim woman. Believing man, believing woman. Righteous man, righteous woman. What I'm trying to say is that in Islam, we do not have this thing of saying this one is superior over the other. We don't have that in Islam. We are all equal in front of Allah wa ta'ala. What is there is that we all have our roles and responsibilities to play. Yes, the remnants of Jahiliyyah up until today is still alive. Those who responded positively and continue to respond positively to the calling of our beloved prophet changed. But there are those who failed and failed to respond. Mm -hmm. Typical example is what we are commemorating in these days and nights. We are in the days and nights of Fatimiya. Fatimiya is as a result of what the beloved daughter of our beloved prophet had to endure after the departure of her beloved father from this world. There wasn't much time between her and her beloved father. But we know what happened. At least, brothers and sisters, the agreement between all Muslims is that there was a threat when it comes to attacking the beloved daughter of our beloved prophet. And not only that, the daughter of the prophet was slapped on her face. And not only that, she lost her unborn child. So therefore, this remnants of Jahiliya, my dear brothers and sisters, is still there. Until in Allah's, one doesn't open his or her eyes to say, you know what? I'm going to follow the true teachings of our beloved prophet. It will continue. And this happened as per the prediction of our beloved prophet when he had that heart-to-heart -heart conversation with his beloved daughter, Fatima to Zahra. So therefore, there was an attempt as agreed by all Muslims in trying to attack Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. And by us, she was attacked. She was made to bleed. And this, to me, is a typical example of misogyny. It's hatred against the kawthar, as she's titled by the Holy Quran. So this is a typical example. And the example you give, Karbala, and after Karbala, Look at what happened. These are women. These are girls. But they were not spared. Look at the journeys of these women from Karbala to Sham, for example. They were not spared. They were held with stones. Every single city they enter. And so therefore, Jahiliya, unfortunately, it is still there. Hundred oh. percent. I'm. I would love to continue the musib, <laughs> but I think perhaps we might need a little bit more time to gather because I want to use this to kind of look into situations today. Perhaps we can kind of look into examples within your community, your resident alim. You've dealt with many situations within our communities. When I say ours, by the way, I don't mean just ours in Toronto. I mean in general, the Shia community in general. You've dealt with many. You've dealt with couples. You've dealt with uh, you know parents and their children. And what I want to do is perhaps look at history from one angle and now look at modern times and see this stuff is not just something that had happened, for example, 1400 years ago, perhaps what we can see samples of what may have happened and even from those who lament say the Fatima, lament say the Zainab. But perhaps this act still exists within 
to our, towards our own daughters, towards our own sisters. I want to kind of pick your brain a little in terms of what you currently work with as a resident alim. What situations, obviously I don't want names, but um, what kind of situations do you typically go through under, or what is a common um, issue that comes forward to you? Yeah. You see, there's one thing we need to bear in mind. There is no community which is immune. Absolutely. From wrongs, from mistakes. I know some of us are still in this dream world that I'm a Muslim. I'm a lover and a follower of Ahl al-Bayt. We are in a community where all are Muslims and lovers and the followers of Ahl al-Bayt. It will be hard for someone to be, example, misogynist or chauvinist and the other titles that we have out there. By the way, chauvinist is someone who holds the view that women are naturally weak. And men are naturally superior over women. And women cannot do much. The other title is what? Or acronym, if you like. There are people who don't like the opposite gender at all. So you've asked a very interesting question. Alhamdulillah, through the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal and his inaya and the blessings of our beloved Ahl al-Bayt. It's not a long time thing, but I've been a resident alim for more than 15 years yeah. in different communities, you know, Africans, to some extent Pakistanis, Khoja communities, Iranian community, some Arabs, in different countries, most especially in Africa. And Alhamdulillah, we do get these blessings, opportunities, really. It is the tawfiq of Allah from time to time to travel to different communities in the holy month of Ramadan, Muharram, Fatimiya. And we also get a chance to go for ziyara. So you meet a lot of people. Absolutely. In your work as a resident alim, as a guest speaker. What I'm going to share now, brothers and sisters, is my own personal experience. What I see and what I experience. What I tried to intervene. Some I succeeded and some not. And of course, we do not claim the two of us to be experts in this field. Of course. Muslims in general, there are other places when you go, you will not have prayer facilities for women. It's a big problem. So some non-Muslims look at this and attack Islam. There are places you go, there will be no facilities for women. If a woman finds herself somewhere, when it is time for prayers in those kind of places I'm talking about, she will find it difficult. So that's one. Number two, we have this thing we call spiritual abuse. Kindly pay attention, brothers and sisters. Spiritual abuse. This spiritual abuse is everywhere. With Muslims and not Muslims, with Shias and non-Shias. And as I said, some Shias are in dream world and Muslims that, no, we are immune. We love Al al Bayt. There will be Shafa for Al al Bayt. So you don't have any of this problem. I said, You're dreaming, my dear brother and my dear sister. Let me give you typical examples of spiritual abuse in line with what we are discussing. Otherwise, spiritual abuse is massive. Example 
Quran says ar-rijalu qawwamuna 'ala an-nisa barabar direct translation men some will use translation quote and quote superior but i don't go with that translation qawwami from the word qiyam meaning men are protectors of women hmm. but another translation you look at ar-rijalu qawwamuna 'ala an-nisa meaning men are superior that's wrong translation qiyam the word is qiyam qiyam stand for someone yeah unfortunately some men even some shias and some sunnis say no we are superior than you you belong to me you are in my house if i say something you must ask me how high i jump but sorry i call this thing culture not islam so some use wallah this verse say no, no i'm far better superior quran mentioned but allah said you are a protector you provide so that's one example of spiritual abuse another typical example when it comes to divorce islam for me is solid is powerful there is nothing wrong with the teachings of islam the wrong is with some of the practitioners of islam divorce we are told in our jurisprudence the key to divorce is in the hand of who in the hand of a man isn't it so some spiritually abuse this and i have these examples a lot marriage is not working civil divorce is done but the man said i'm not giving you the divorce divorce is in my hand i call it abuse there is no force in relationship absolutely some you know some of the women are really good they will even wait for one year two years three years four years six years waiting for this gentleman to say you know what i'm divorcing you it is unfair and it is not acceptable and i do not believe someone will want his sister or his auntie or his mom or somebody related to him to go through that but wallah good number of our women are going through that habibi you don't want her let her go and what is really painful is that you've already done with your civil divorce so that's another spiritual abuse what i call spiritual abuse is where a man is taking advantage of someone fantastic religion. taking wrong advantage of religion ah santo of the religious teachings is taking wrong advantage no i'm not going to give do whatever you want to do another example some will even go ahead to get married mm. but still ah santo i've seen that sadly I've seen cases where you know the divorce hasn't actually happened but the wife and husband have been separated. So divorce haven't happened, you know, the civil case has already been completed by Islamically they haven't been divorced yet. So so you have the woman she's for example maybe have a kid she might not have a child and the man they're both separated now but yeah. he's refusing to give her absolute their divorce he's but refusing. he's now looking for a second Another wife. example. No, Islam says you cannot go out of my house without your permission okay fine yeah what does it mean some abuse this absolutely it's all within that concept in my humble understanding of protection you are her shield you are her protector a ghira ah, you eh, mean. but don't abuse that absolutely. now worse than that my dear brothers and sisters we need to be careful we need to be careful we need to be true muslims if teachings of islam or your culture clash with islam true and i don't think there is culture which really sanctions something like this yeah there are those who lift their hands yeah 
What? No, no, I brought you. I made the visa for you. If you dare talk, I revoke the visa. I marry you from, say, Dar es Salaam. Or from Mombasa. No, no, from Pakistan. Wherever. I sponsored you. If you dare talk and tell community, I am going to revoke the visa. Sometimes you find some women, they keep quiet. But I've seen a situation where men lifted their hand and slapped the woman. We got to know it, tried to attend to it. Said this woman said this has been very long term. That's another. Another situation is that some in-laws don't help. A girl comes, not ever, of course, in-laws. I have met, mashallah, unbelievable, excellent in-laws. But we have situations within our community. Yeah. Whereby a girl comes, she's married in this particular house. Obviously, they dump every work on her to do. Okay? So she does. But then when they are sitting, she's not allowed to come down. You sit somewhere until we finish. When we are eating, you don't come down. Until we finish eating, you come. Oh, that's what I call misogyny. This is hatred against this woman, against this woman. Yeah. And it is totally against the teachings of Islam. Habibi, today, in this day and age, in 21st century, we have our communities, organizations, where women's voice are shunned. Baba, you want to discuss about women and you don't want them to be on the table. How does it work? They spend more time with your children. Majority of the members of a community are women. I don't know here, but in most cases, they are women. Yeah. So people are still discussing, do we allow them to come in to be part of the board of directors or not? So how do we build a community? So this really, for me, is an example of what we are discussing tonight. And last but not certainly the least experience I have, emotional abuse of women. Of course, I'm not saying all women are also immune, but tonight yeah. we are discussing hatred of women. Emotional abuse. Some men can be silent and woman will be dying inside. Some will use finance to silence woman. If you dare do this, I cut. Take away some money. Take away. And Islam said no. Yeah, because the man is meant to be the protector. Islam said no. That's why Rasulullah and al Bayt taught us. If you take care of a woman, either one or two or three, mm. Jannah for you. Because yeah. Islam wanted to change this mentality. Yeah. To such an extent, Islam said, if you don't have a daughter and you have a sister or sisters and you take care of them, you get the same reward. Mm -hmm. Islam says, if you don't have a sister and you have aunties and you take care of them, you get the same reward. So Islam came to discipline us. But some, unfortunately, and sometimes when you are in a house where boys are treated differently, because you have that, where there are boys and girls in one house, and boys are treated, mashallah, and girls, not really. So that boy will grow to be misogynist. Just to be clear, so I understand from Islam, men and women are not equal. This is my understanding. I, I want to ask more of your Islamic opinion as well. Men and women are not equal. But that doesn't mean, for example, one is more superior than the other. But it's that the way they're treated is different, but neither should be abused. Yeah. From my understanding where you're saying. No, no, obviously, you see, as I mentioned earlier on, men are not superior over women. They're protected. No, women are superior over men. Absolutely. You know, we all have our nature. Absolutely. We all have our circumstances. We all have our rules to play. Mm -hmm. That's what Islam says. Allah chose men, he chose women. Allah elevated men, he elevated women.
-hmm. So that whole issue of this one superior equality, Islam doesn't discuss that. Of course. But in terms of potential, yes, we have equal potential. Yeah. Allah has given women same potential he gave men. If you work hard, mashallah, you're going to get somewhere. Inshallah, tomorrow that's part of my you know, lecture. You know, you work hard, reaching Allah, you reach Allah than her. She works harder reaching Allah more than you. She reach Allah than you. Mm -hmm. So that's what Islam says. Wallahi salil insani illa masaa. Wa anna sa'ayahu sofa yura. Insan is nothing but his or her own effort. And when you undertake the effort, the effort will be seen. Some women will go to Jannah before men. Some men. And some men will go to Jannah before some women. So Islam, you know, looks at us with the same look mm -hmm. when it comes to potential. Absolutely. Yeah. Each person has their different role, but ultimately in terms of reaching the levels or their status, both men and women have the same potential. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I just wanted to make a step back and then we'll make a step forward thereafter. You mentioned different examples of situations which you felt, for example, violence, whether emotionally, spiritually, or even physically abusive towards women. From your experience, out of all the, I guess, issues that you come across, whether it's business related, civil related, marriage related, family related, out of the hundred of people that come to you, out of, out of the hundred, how many of them are involving where, or where a woman is more, is being the one that's abused by the man? Yeah, so in this day and age, really brothers and sisters, it is both sided. Yeah. You have situations where a woman is the one who's really causing mayhem. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have that. I came across this type of a situation because I do mediations. Absolutely. And there are situations where men are on top of their games. Yeah. They cause mayhem. But yes, my personal experience, men are more in terms of causing mayhem and abuse to women. But yes, we have women also who are causing that. What I see women doing more, they abuse the law of some of our countries. Mm -hmm. So men, good with spiritual abuse. Man, a woman good with legal abuse, that's my experience. What do I mean by that? Obviously, in some countries, I don't know here much. Once a woman says, <coughs> the authorities will jump. Yeah. Before scrutinizing, the man will get locked. And then later, they will scrutinize, will be granted bail, and then... But if man says, <coughs> he will do more... Oh! before a woman is taken. So I've seen some women taking advantage of that. Small thing, which is really not an example of abuse. She will want to take it on board for that man to be in trouble. That's one. Number two, when it comes to child custody. Yeah. As a situation, my example is that some women are abusing it. So we've got two side examples. Mm -hmm. Men here, Strong women here, strong. Yeah. That's quite interesting that you mentioned that there's, yes, typically there's more women who are affected. Yeah. But it, from the way that you've mentioned, it does sound like there's a decent percentage within the men, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, that's not the topic for tonight, at least. And I know a lot of us maybe in the crowd that would love to hear this. Perhaps we can have it for another discussion. But for tonight specifically, I'm curious, because we, we're almost running out of time, and I want to set maybe an action plan between us as individuals. Because as you started off your talk, you said that misogyny is not when a man, for example, abuses a woman, but it's more just, obviously, there's different, forces, different forms of that abuse but it's typically an abuse towards women in general, right? Whether it's a man, whether it's a system, whether it's even a woman, yeah. women abusing another woman. So I wanted to ask you, maybe let's have 
set a game plan, for example. As a community, what can we do to, it'd be very hard to, I would say, get a 0%, but there's a possibility to get close to zero. As your experience as a resident alim, what would your advice to be to all of us as a community for us to perhaps have a situation where how can we make steps to get our sisters being heard more? Yeah. This is very, very important. First thing first, as I mentioned earlier on, our women need to be involved in decision making. That's crucial. Because you as man, you may think you know it all. But do not forget that you may not understand the sentiment of women like a woman herself. Mm -hmm. So first, in a community where women are not part of decision-making body, I strongly advise and suggest that they need to be part of the decision-making body. That's one. That's very general. Second most important suggestion, which I feel will help a lot, each and every community need to have safeguarding policy. Safeguarding policy is crucial. It's about well-being. It's not only about children. Yeah. It's about women, it's about everyone. Because if you do not have safeguarding policies, when you are faced with such a challenge, for example, someone comes to you as a leader of the community, my husband slapped me, mm -hmm. what do you do? Come, you're gonna think from your own pocket. You need to have a safeguarding policy. And try, if possible, that your safeguarding policy goes in line with the law of your country. Otherwise, you may end up in trouble easily. 100%. Because when someone comes and the person is on your premise and the person goes through certain situations and you know about it and you do nothing about it, you may end up into trouble. Mm -hmm. So safeguarding policy is crucial and try to upgrade it from time to time. So that's number two. Mm -hmm. Number three, as community, I think we have it. If we don't have it, it's something that I will strongly suggest. We need to have family support committee. You know, like you have different subcommittees, isn't it? Yeah. If there's one very important subcommittee that every community must have is family support. Tomorrow my topic is family institution. Mm -hmm. Taking cue from the house of the Lady of Light and Molai Kainat. Without family support structure in a community, how on earth will you be able to support families? Yeah. And this family support subcommittee should include experts within the community. I'm sure you have counselors in the community here. This is a massive community, Toronto, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Every time I come, I discover different experts in the community. Include psychologists in that committee. Include people who are experts in family affairs. Yeah. And obviously, Islamic scholar. Alhamdulillah, you guys are lucky. You have Said Muhammad Rizvi here, Sheikh Hassanen, and you have other scholars here. Include them. So that family support subcommittee is of great importance. So when a person goes through a challenge, the first point of call is not the president of the community. Mm -hmm. It should be the family subcommittee. I have a question regarding the family support yeah. community. So within this committee, do you think, so, and the reason why I ask this is because there have been cases where people want to avoid joining, being going to support service within the community because they're afraid that perhaps this individual might share information with others within the community. And I've seen it firsthand where people say, hey, I'm not going to 
X, Y, and Z because I'm scared this person might tell the next person. Would you think perhaps maybe it's important to set something up, which I totally agree, but instead of it having affiliated within the community, having it separate, something that the community, I guess, supports, but having it not directly linked to the community. No, I understand what you're talking. You're talking of confidentiality. Exactly. It needs a lot of work to bring people up to speed. So I give an example of myself. I get, a, I, I get busy, very busy, mm -hmm. back home, yeah? With community work. I will say 60% or 70% of my work as a resident alim are social matters. It's not sitting on the member. Mm. Today, the work of resident alim has changed. It's not the old traditional yeah. way of resident alim, whereby you only lead salah, and then you sit on the member Quran. No, 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 no. It's more than that. Yeah, that's normal. Everybody can be trained and lead salah and recite majlis. You understand? I'm not undermining majlis. I also speak. I love to recite majlis. I lead salah. Yeah. No, no. Where is the alim today? It has evolved. Absolutely. So most of the work of Reza Alim, I'm sure if said Muhammad Rizmi, he will, his worth of experience, he will can share with us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more of social issues yeah. than any other thing. So for me, sort of advantage, not advantage, I don't know. <laughs> People would come to me, yeah? I get so much busy. And I will tell them, look, I'm busy. They say, no, no, because you are not Koja. You are not Koja. We feel comfortable when we come to you. So why you, no, no, because you're not Koja, you're not gonna tell people. Yeah. So what do you do in that situation? You need to build confidence. Absolutely. I do not support the idea of not doing it within the community. I support the idea of doing it within the committee, subcommittee of our community. But then what you do? Select properly. Members of that subcommittee, select properly. Let them be experts within the community. And thereafter, get their profiles like biographies, CVs, and make a small video. Let them all come and share their experience on that small video. From time to time during program, let Muki announce about them. Once they start working and people start seeing it, they will then ask those people who benefit from them to share feedback. Slowly but surely, people will come. I face the same challenge with yeah. my community back home there. But alhamdulillah now, people have confidence in yeah. what people do. It takes time. Of because course. confidentiality is of great importance. Of course. Yeah. And I like how you mentioned that um, confidentiality is important and having something within a community. Um, something we do have within the Jaffrey community, Lovely. alhamdulillah, is Lovely. the Jaffrey support services. They are a group where, you know, you can approach, they'll give you, they'll provide you a social worker, someone you can speak to Mashallah. about situations, and they'll keep things confident, confidential, strictly confidential, so Lovely. that, you know, you don't have to, I guess, stress that what you're speaking to them will go to another individual. And I'm sure they've come across many different cases with marriage-related issues, individual-related issues, maybe parent-children-related issues. And I think this would, is a way for people to, if they are having circumstances like this, it would be nice for them to approach uh, someone within the JSS, you can say. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I definitely agree. Because what, what I've realized is that people love communities, mm -hmm. seriously. That's my experience. You know. There are people who you will never see them in the mosque. Yeah. You will maybe see them on the day of Ashura, for example. But that doesn't mean that they don't love the community. Why am I saying this? I see people when they have issues, wallahi, and they try every nook and cranny, and there is no solution, they call you. They call you. Even those who do not necessarily agree with the mainstream, yeah. Marja'iya or stuff. When they have a big family issues, first point of call is the Jamaat. So Jamaat is so important in the lives of people, by the way. And Jamaat should not get discouraged that people are not coming to us. So we, no, keep doing it slowly. As it is said, when you knock the door and you insist knocking the door, eventually the door will be opened. 
So have that support structure. Make it properly professional. Mm -hmm. I know our time is up. But what you do, those in that family support structure, from time to time, Jamaat should help them to go for training. Let them become qualified mediators. Yeah. Let them become, why not? Why not? No, well, like if we get families right, as I said, tomorrow I will expound on this, inshallah. Absolutely. We will have solid communities. The biggest problem we have, families. People sitting here, they are individual family members. Yeah. If he comes from a healthy family, you come from a healthy family, I come from a healthy family, what happened? We're going to build a healthy community. But if na'udhu billah hudana khast, sick family, abusive family, now the work of Muki is going to be too much. Marks. <laughs> the work is going to be too much. So therefore, it's important we invest in family support and inshallah, within a short space of time, we'll see the light of the day. No, 100%. And I actually appreciate that you mentioned like the family value being so important. Yeah. Right? Um, we still do have a little bit of time. Don't oh, mashallah. mashallah. We still have a little bit of time. So I kind of want to, before we go into the musibah, I actually want to ask one more thing because I feel like it's important. You're, you mentioned tomorrow you're going to elaborate on it more. So perhaps maybe get a small synopsis for tomorrow. The family structure in terms of it being important. So we mentioned at the beginning in terms of the subject of misogyny. And I want to at least elaborate using that topic in terms of why it needs to minimize in order to have a healthy family relationship. Because as you mentioned, if you have a black hole somewhere, it then starts to pick holes everywhere else. And just like a balloon, it starts to deflate. And ideally, as a community, you want a healthy family here, a healthy family here, and a healthy family here. And slowly, that will begin to grow as one big community, one big family, as you can say. And Alhamdulillah, the Jaffrey community has been able to grow for quite a while. Alhamdulillah. Perhaps I want just to kind of conclude on this point where, you know, this, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally, whether it's spiritually, whether it's financially abusive towards another individual, how that has a play within the family. So perhaps maybe you've seen cases where the children don't grow up correct. Or you've seen uh, situations where the child, whether they have a son or a daughter, grew up to being someone who, I guess you can say, missed out on their potential. I want you to elaborate on that, if you can. Yeah, no, inshallah, inshallah. One. Obviously, you see, abuse of whatever kind is unlawful, Islamically, illegally. Mm -hmm. Could be emotional abuse, where one ignores his wife completely. When she starts speaking, ah, you've been too emotional. You like crying, you shut her. You don't allow her to express herself. It's a form of abuse, baby. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned about finances also, it's a form of abuse. Some capitalize on the weakness of others. Either a woman capitalizes on the weakness of her husband, or husband capitalized on the weakness of a woman, as I mentioned about visa sponsorship and whatever. Yeah. That's also a form of abuse that some women go through within our communities globally. Yeah. Now, you see, when a child is brought up in an abusive environment, there are certain effects that can be seen or manifest in the life of that child. A child can become paranoid. I'm not saying that is the only cause of paranoia, but that's one, can become paranoid. Number two, a child can lose his or her self-esteem. Because yeah, the father always yell, always shout. He doesn't allow the woman to express herself. Mm. And of course, vice versa. It can affect Child's education. Yeah. You know, phobia. Yeah. Social phobia, you name it. Sometimes it is caused by abusive environments. 
So it's not that the child has been in the, uh, been receiving the abuse, but Excellent. it's that they've seen it Excellent. firsthand. That is why the best factor for child upbringing is the solid relationship between mother and father. Yeah. You can try whatever you want to try. If you and your wife, you and your husband, there is no this solid, healthy relationship. Children, they have graphic memory. It's registered inside. Today, Habibi, Haji Adnan, you come across, I mean, this is what I experienced. A girl, a girl, just loosely I'm using it, otherwise she's a young adult, who will say to Sheikh, I will never get married. We have it in our communities. I don't want to get married. You see it on the memorable day, marriage, 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 I don't want to get. So when you try to analyze and pain the person and try to understand, he said, no, because my father, if that is marriage, assalamu ala marriage. Yeah. We have that. Also, we have young adult male will say, you know what? No, 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 no. This is my father. I do not want to see him in my life. Why? He mistreated my mom. I don't want to see him. If I come to the mosque, he come from this door, I want to come from that door. It happens. Yeah. So therefore, abuse of whatever kind cannot. In fact, what is even so sad? Some men will put hidden CCTV camera in their house. This, I've seen this, by the way. Whatever I'm sharing with you is not ESA. You'll put camera, just monitor him for what? Causes the family to be paranoid. Yeah. He wants to be bossy. Yeah. And so we come, we cry for the lady of light. We aspire to emulate and follow the footsteps of this lady. But then we go back home and we do something else. The lady of light went to the mosque of the holy prophets. And she rendered that powerful sermon, which you normally mention in our masaib. As she was coming back home, what happened? Imam al Hassan alayhi salam on her right. Aba Abdullah on her left. And the enemy appeared from behind. And he slapped on her right face. Right eye. Hence, Imam al Hassan will mention, whenever I would see this man, I would remember, you are the one. You beat my mom until you made her bleed. So if I cry for the lady of light, and then I still go back home with this abusive mentality and unnecessarily justified using some of the Islamic teachings, then you don't belong here. I mentioned last night in my lecture, Absolutely. when Prophet said to her, Ya Radallahu li ridaha. Ahsantum, because Fatima is lazzatu mir'atilla. Fatima is the test of divine mirror. You stand in front of a mirror. You look at yourself. That's the reflection, isn't it? So this is a Fatima. She's divine mirror. I look at myself, Nuru Muhammad. Can I tick the boxes? No, 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 I cannot. It means I'm not a true lover of Fatima. Remember that tradition. When she's pleased with you, Allah is pleased with you. When she's angry with you, Allah is And I believe as a person, anyone who is abusive, the lady of light is angry with you. It's as simple as that. It's easy to talk about women's right in Islam. It's easy to quote, Lady of Light went to give someone. It's easy to quote, Sharikatul Hussein, alayhi salam, rendered powerful sermon. But wallah, there are men within our communities who are too abusive and capitalizing on that. And you know our community, as I said, we need support structure in our community. No, Sheikh, you know what? I don't want anyone in the community to know. It's true, confidentiality. But Baba, you are dying. You are dying. No, 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 no. You know, my children, I don't want... No, no, no. Will you stay here? I will stay like that. You are dying. 
So what I'm trying to say is that as a woman, if you feel things are not going well, don't suffer alone. Don't suffer in silence. Pick up your phone, call someone. Call someone. Don't suffer alone. Because if you suffer alone, Allah is not happy also. 100%. So we need to encourage them with the support I mentioned. Let them have workshops from time to time. Yeah. Let them have conversation from time to time. Invite experts. You know, before I came here, I went to the police headquarters before I came. I went to Umrah. Before I went to Umrah, I went to police headquarters. Why did I go there? Because there was a case which came to me, mm -hmm. and I felt I didn't handle it well. From my own perspective, not somebody told me. So what I decided to do, we've got our relationship. So I went. I said, look, if I have this case, how do I go about it? Yes. So they said, look, this is a general government policy. Look into that, look into that. There are these support signposts. So we need really to encourage people. If we don't do that, and member doesn't speak of these Honest. kind of issues, yeah. people will not come forward. Member is not only for the traditional thing. Member is also for contemporary issues. Of course. Of course, 100%. And perhaps, I guess we can end off tonight discussing where this conversation began with to the beginning. I think, as you mentioned, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi came and he removed, he removed this jahiliya, but there are still those specks of jahiliya which remained. You had the individual who approached the house of Sayyidatina Tinisa al alameen commanded and threatens the people saying that Ya Amir al mumin or didn't say Ya Amir al mumineen but O oh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, come out or we will burn the house. And the individual was told, the second was told, that don't you know who's within the house? It's Sayyidina Fatima. And Al Hassan and Al Hussein. He said, So what? Mm -hmm. Perhaps let us get emotionally invested and understand this tribulation which Sayyidatina Tinisa al Alameen went through. Sallallahu wa sallim alayka ya Rasool Allah Ya Rahmatallahi al-Wasi'a Wa ya Baba Najat al-Umma Sallallahu wa sallim alayka ya Rasool Allah وَعَلَى أَغْلِ بَيْتِكَ الْمَعْصُومِينَ الْمُنْتَجَبِينَ يَا لَيْتَنَا كُنَّا مَا كُنْهُمْ سَادَتِي فَنَفُوزَ هَذَا فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Mu'minin and mu'minat, let us take our hearts to the holy city of Medina and to the house of Sayyidatu Nisa'il Alameen the house of Amir al muminin alayhi salam. Let us open our hearts and shed tears on account of the brutality and oppression experienced by Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. You know, Mu'mineen and Mu'minat, this idea of breaking the ribs of Fatima was later remembered by Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam. Narration tells us a lady was walking in the market of Banu Umayyah. Suddenly the lady fell down 
as she was falling down, she called out, Ya Allah, curse the killers of Fatima al Zahra. The lady was arrested by the enemies. One companion of Imam Jafar al Sadiq saw how she was arrested. He rushed to inform Imam Jafar al Sadiq. Imam made dua. Upon making the dua, the lady was released by the enemies. Imam called the lady and he looked at the lady, asked her, Oh lady, why did you curse the killers of Fatima? She said, Oh my beloved Imam, as I was falling down, I realized I was falling on my ribs. That was the moment I remembered the broken ribs of Fatima and Zahra. That was the moment I remembered the unborn child of Fatima and Zahra, alayhi salam. You know, Mu'minin and Mu'minat, our beloved Prophet, before he departed from this world, he sat with his beloved daughter Fatima and Zahra. He said to Fatima, Oh, my beloved Fatima. You will suffer after me from harsh treatment of those who claim to be my lovers and followers. We are told in the narration, the Holy Prophet, while he was on his deathbed, tears would overflow from the eyes of Rasul Allah until the tears will overtook, my dear brothers and sisters, the beard of Rasul Allah. They ask Rasul Allah, why? Why the tears? Fatima and Zahra ask her beloved father. He said, I am crying, Fatima, because I'm remembering what will happen to you after me. And there will be no one to help you, Fatima and Zahra. Suddenly, tears began to overflow from the eyes of Fatima. Fatima cried and cried and cried. The father asked her, Oh, Fatima John, why are you crying and shedding tears? She said, I'm not crying because of what will happen to me after you. But I'm crying of separation from you. I cannot live without you, oh, my beloved father. The Holy Prophet then said to Fatima, Fatima, you will be the next person to join me. Allah Akbar, after me you will be the next person to join me. And as you know, Mu'minin and Mu'minat, she is the first Mataya in the way of Wilaya, in the way of Imam Fatima al Zahra. Narration tells us the Holy Prophet, whenever he would see Fatima, he would remember what would happen to Fatima. As if he could see humiliation entering the house of Fatima. As if he could see uh, the security of Fatima is being broken. As if he could see the ribs of Fatima is being broken. Uh, now you know the way the Holy Prophet had that conversation with Fatima. Fatima had the same conversation with Zainab. Take your heart to Sham and Karbala. Baby Fatima, before she left this world, she had a heart to heart conversation with Sayyidah Zainab. But when did we know what she said to Zainab? We only knew on the 10th day of Muharram. When Abu Abdullah bid that final farewell, as he was heading to the battlefield, Zainab stood at Talli Zainab. She called out, Mahlan, Mahlan, Ibn Zahra. Oh, Hesti, oh, Hesti, oh, the son of Zahra. Abu Abdullah looked at Zainab and he said to Zainab, My mom, before she departed from this world, she whispered into your ears, What did she say to you, O oh, Zainab? Zainab then looked towards Medina. She said, Oh, Abba Abdullah, open your chest and your neck. Our mom said, I should smell your chest and kiss your neck. We said, Zainab, why smelling the neck and kissing the chest? We only got to know this when Shemar sat on the chest of Abba Abdullah. 
We only got to know the reason uh, when they struck severally on the neck of Abba Abdullah. As Adarani Muhtaram, I leave you with these last lines. Allahu Akbar. You know Zainab? She saw fire on a house in Medina. And Zainab saw fire on Khaimaga in Karbala. Mu'minin and Mu'minat, Zainab saw in Medina a slap on the eye of her mother. And Zainab saw slaps on the cheek of Sukaina. Mu'minin and Mu'minat, Zainab in Medina saw the child being aborted forcefully. Likewise, in Karbala, she saw that arrow on the neck of Ali Yunil Asgar. Allah, 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 يا زهراء معتم الله يا حسين 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 Ya Hussein, 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 Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein, 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 Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Hey Ya Hussein, 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 Ya Hussein. Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain Ye ghurbat Ali hai 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 Ye غربت علی ہے یہ 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 غربت علی ہے حق مانگنے جو زہرا حق مانگنے جو زہرا دربار میں گئی ہے یہ غربت علی 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 ہے حق مانگنے جو زہرا حق مانگنے جو زہرا دربار میں گئی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے
غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے آواز آ رہی ہے میں بنت مصطفیٰ ہوں بابا کے کلمہ گویو میں ہی تو فاطمہ ہوں پہچاننے سے دنیا پہچاننے سے دنیا انکار کر رہی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے مسجد میں سر جھکائے مولا کھڑے ہوئے ہیں حاکم کی تحمتوں کو چھپ چاپ سن رہے ہیں سیدی کا سب کے آگے سیدی کا سب کے آگے جھٹلائی جا رہی ہے یہ غربت علی 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 ہے ایک کونچے میں پہنچ کر دیکھا ہے مجتبہ نے ظالم نے ضرب ماری کیسے خدا ہی جانے بیتے نبی زمین پر بیتے نبی زمین پر غش کھا کے گر پڑی ہے یہ غربت علی 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 ہے پہلو بھی ہے شکاستہ ہاتھوں پہ بھی ہے جالے ہے آپ کی امانت اب آپ کے حوالے یہ کہہ کے مرتضی نے یہ کہہ کے مرتضی نے میں یاد نبی کو دی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے مظلوم کربلا کو یاد آگئی سکینہ مظلوم کربلا کو یاد آگئی سکینہ مصطفیٰ کی کنفز کا غات اٹھا مظلوم کربلا کو یاد آگئی سکینہ بیٹی پہ مصطفیٰ کی کنفز کا غات اٹھا بیلو میں مرتضا کی بیلو میں مرتضا کی 
تلوار رو پری ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یہ غربت علی ہے یا حسین یا حسین یا حسین یا حسین و محمد و آل محمد صلوات بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ السلام علیکہ یا امیر المؤمنین السلام علیکہ یا فاطمہ الزہراء السلام علیکہ یا حسن المجتبہ السلام علیکہ یا ابا عبداللہ الحسین وعلا تسعة المعصومین من ذریتک علی ابن الحسین ومحمد ابن علی وجعفر ابن محمد وموسى ابن جعفر وعلی ابن موسى ومحمد ابن علی وعلی ابن محمد والحسن ابن علی والحجت ابن الحسن عجل اللہ فرجه وسهل اللہ مخرجه وظهورك والسلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ